Good morning. Welcome to the Chicala Kitchen. I'm Patty, and today I have a really special, special cookie recipe that we're going to be sharing. When I was catering and private chefing and cooking for people, this was probably my number one bestseller in terms of individual cookies. Um, my rainbow cookies. Now I know you've gone to bakeries or even in the supermarket, they sell those little packets of rainbow cookies. Mine are not like that. These are big and tall. It's almost like eating a slice of cake. I'm going to post some pictures so you can see they're almost three inches tall. So this is a very special and very delicious rainbow cookie. This video is going to be a little different. A lot of it will be in photographs because it's a process and I need to keep it short enough so that TikTok will accept it. So I'm going to give you the ingredients. Here we go. We need four sticks of butter, four full sticks, softened, room temperature at least, eight eggs, two cups of flour, two cups of sugar. We need two full tablespoons of almond extract. And we need almond paste, a pound at least. I use a pound and a quarter. This is vacuum sealed because I buy the big seven pound cans and divide it up. But I use a pound and a quarter. A pound is fine, anything in between that. I would not go more than a pound and a quarter. It'll affect the texture of the cookie. You need apricot preserves and red raspberry. I know most cookies do one or the other. We do both. We need chocolate to melt, to coat the outside. We need whatever your favorite kind of sprinkle or decoration is. And we need food coloring, red and green, and one layer will be white, just like the Italian flag. Okay, now let me tell you what I do. First of all, as far as the jams and preserves. I whip them up in my little mini processor. Apricot preserves especially are going to have pieces of apricot in them. You don't want that when you're cutting into your cookie. I whip these up and they spread much easier and it just makes a much nicer cookie. Almond paste. Almond paste can be very difficult to mix in. This has to be very smooth. So let me give you my little trick. I'm going to open this up, break off pieces, put them all in the food processor, and whiz it up. It will become almost a powder, like sandy, except kind of moist because almond paste is soft. Then it's ready to mix into your cookie dough. So the first thing we're going to do is whip up the four sticks of butter with the two cups of sugar. We're going to add the processed almond paste and the eggs and the flour, also a little bit of salt, the flavoring, and then we'll be back. We're going to divide it in three portions, color two of them, one red, one green, and I'll show you how this is done. See you in a few minutes. I did forget to mention, you need to line three pans, bottom of the pan with parchment paper. Now, I know a lot of people do it in a 9 by 13 pan. That's why you get the thin little layers. I do them in a 10 by 10 square. That's why we have nice, big, fat, fluffy cookies. So take your choice. And at the end, we'll talk about how long to bake them for, depending on the size of your pan. But I use the 10 inch square and wait till you see what we get. what you want. Crumbled, smooth little pieces. Here we go. Four sticks of butter and two cups of sugar till pale yellow and very fluffy. Now we add in the almond paste 
and process again. Now I'm adding in eight eggs, one or two at a time until smooth, and I get all eight in. Look how fluffy that is. I'm going to add in my extract, two cups of flour, and process till it's very smooth with no lumps, and then we'll be back. Divide it in three, one green, one red, one white. Here we go. Okay, divide it in three. Here we have three pans, three colors. 325 degree oven. Now, depending on the size of the pan you use, whether you used a 13 by nine or like me, a 10 by 10, um, that's going to impact how thick your cookies are and how long they're in the oven. So anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. These will probably take 20 to 25 minutes. Um, the edges are going to be slightly brown and the center will be set, not liquidy. Take them out of the oven, let them cool for about 10 minutes, and then turn them out onto a wire rack to cool completely. We'll be back. All right, so we have our three layers. They've been cooled. Now, what I did was I put my red layer on a sheet of wax paper. I whipped up both my fillings. Now, if you don't like raspberry or you don't like apricot, you can use all of one or all of the other or any flavor you like. We go pretty traditional around here. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spread some of my whipped preserves. Now, you don't want a super thick coating. We don't want these slices sliding around, these layers sliding around on each other or cookies coming apart when people are trying to eat them. So just a thin layer. It's just a little bit of flavor in there. So this is the apricot. You could use either one at any time. Just a thin layer. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my white layer and lay it right on top, just like that. I made a mess here. Hang on. Okay. Center it, and I'm going to put my raspberry layer on top of this one. Again, just a thin layer. Don't go crazy with this because you will have very messy cookies instead of pretty cookies and the layers will slide around and make it much harder for you to put the melted chocolate on. So, here we go. Just a little bit. And trust me, you will taste the raspberry and the apricot through this. Okay, good. Now we're gonna get our green layer. which is sticking a little bit, which is pretty common. Don't worry about it because when they're cut, you won't see any cracks, trust me. Okay, this one's going to be difficult. So we're just gonna flip it this way. There we go. Don't worry about that. It will be covered with chocolate. If it sticks, it's not a problem. Okay, perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to melt just a little bit of the chocolate because we're going to put a layer here, refrigerate it till it firms up, and then this will be flipped over and it will actually be the bottom and we will do the sides. That way you end up with the traditional seven layer cookie. Chocolate, red, filling, white, filling, green, chocolate, seven layers. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes with some melted chocolate. Okay, melted chocolate on top. Here's what I'm going to do. Just a layer. Edges will be cut off, so don't worry about the edges. 
I'm gonna spread a nice layer of chocolate here, try to make it as smooth as we can. And then this is going to sit till the chocolate hardens some, then I'm going to wrap it and put it in the fridge so we make sure this bottom layer is nice and firm before we flip it. There we go. Just like that. Okay, we'll be back when this comes out of the fridge. Alrighty, out of the fridge, nice and firm. We're going to trim all four sides so that it's perfectly even. There we go. I'm gonna do this around all four sides. And what you cut off, Cook's treat. There we go. And for the heck of it, I did measure two and three quarter inches nice big fat cookies. I do want to address something. I know that many recipes, if you've looked at other recipes, call for weighting down the cookie layers with a weight for up to eight hours. I have never done that. I don't see the need for it. I think it makes a denser cookie and not as fluffy. You don't have to do it. So we are going to cut all four sides nice and even. We are going to flip this over onto another platter and then we'll be back with more chocolate and we'll finish this off. Okay, so you can see before I poured this new chocolate on, I put four strips of wax paper underneath the edges and that will be to make smoothing it out and cutting a straight edge much easier. We'll show you when it's all hardened. After this is done, we are going to put this in the fridge. Let's see what we got here. We're gonna put this in the fridge, let it harden. And you can keep it refrigerated. I'm just going to cover it well and put it in my nice cool garage until I'm ready to make my cookie platters and send them out. So I'm not going to cut this one. I do have pictures for you of others I've made that were cut so you can take a look, but this one will not be cut yet because this is going out within the week and I it stays fresher if you don't cut it. There we go. So nice and smooth. Have your sprinkles ready. You want to put them on top and decorate while the chocolate is not hard. Nice smooth top. One chibo, one amici. Oops. Good. Mmm, that's yummy. Good food, good friends. Let me know if you try these. I promise they will be the best rainbow cookies you've ever had, and definitely not like what you get at the supermarket. See you in a few.